Today's stuff we're going to be learning is Gitin Daf Yudchet. This is the Daf for Shabbat. We're going to start with a quick review of the Mishnah on Yud Zayin, Amud Aleph. We had a get that was written. It has to be written on the same day, halachic day. Either written at night, signed during the day, written during the day, signed during the day, written at night, signed at night. But if it's written during the night, during the day and signed at night, that is no good. Rabbi Shimon, however, says it's okay. Okay, he says specifically it doesn't generally work, but it does work for get. We're going to get back to this later. Then we started the Gemara with the Machlok at Rabbi Yochan and Arish Lakish as to why they instituted a time in a get. Either because we're worried about a man who's married to his sister's daughter, his niece, which is permitted, and she might end up doing znut, getting, having a relations with somebody else while she's married, and he won't want her to get the death penalty. He'll want to protect her. So he'll lie. He'll basically give her a get, claim that the date was earlier, and she wasn't really a married woman at the time, just to protect her. In order to avoid that, we put Zman and get. Rish Lakish says the issue is payrot, that the husband gets the proceeds of her nifzim alog, her use of her property, and when the get is given, right, when the writ war, the, again, there's going to be an issue with the writing or the signing, but the get is the moment when he no longer has rights to the fruits. So therefore, we have to put a date in so that we'll know when she can claim, oh, those proceeds are mine, right? Fruits meaning proceeds. The proceeds of her property go to her. She can claim it based on the date of the get. So those are two possible reasons why this mom beget. Now we're in the middle of questions against these approaches. And really the questions here are going to be against both approaches. It doesn't matter what the reason is. So last few words of Yud Zayin, I'm a bit. I'm really Ravina le Rava. Ravina says to Rava, Katve ve'ot be'bekiste, di'im mefaise tipayes mai. What if he writes the get with the date, puts it in his pocket for a bunch of days, and then, right, and then says, well, you know, maybe I'll change my mind about it. And now we're going to have an issue because the get has, a, has a, a date on it, which is very good. It's very helpful. But what's the problem? If she doesn't get the get till a bunch of days later, well, then both the payroll issue or the, the niece issue will be a problem because the date doesn't match when they actually got divorced. So Amrle, people don't bring terrible things to happen to them unless they're actually going to happen. And they view a divorce as a bad thing. And the point is he's not going to write and sign the get unless he's actually going to give the get. He's not going to do it and then say, let me just have it around just in case. Okay, that's not the way things work with the get. No, it'll be like bringing on, you know, bad things on himself for when it's not necessarily going to be the case. So, no, don't worry about that case. I'm only Ravina Le Ravashi. Another question now. Ravina asked Ravashi the following question before he asked Ravina. Now he's asking Ravashi. Gitina be'imi medina hayam. What about a get that comes from abroad? Tibechtebe be Nisan, for example, could be written in Nisan because, right, they wrote it abroad, they signed it, and then what? Lomatu at Tishrei. But the get doesn't get abroad until Tishrei. It takes a while, right? It could be six months like they give here. It could be less. It doesn't matter. But the point is, it only gets there much later. She's not divorced till later. So what does the date on the get help her at all? It won't help not for Badachoto, it won't help for Peirot. Amalei Hanu Kale Ilu. Gets that come from abroad, everybody knows about. And then they know that if the woman tries to claim, oh, I wasn't married at the time, or oh, the Peirot are mine, you know, or I wasn't married and when I was with this man. Everybody knows and they know not to rely on the date and the get. They're going to have to find out when actually, you know, we find the Edim Asira, the Edim that gave her the get, to know when she actually received the get. And they're going to know not to rely on that because everybody hears about those kind of gets that come from abroad. Possibly because you have to say, and then once you do that, you do it in front of two or three people, then already people hear about it. Itmar, right? It's not clear why there's a Kala Ile, but for whatever reason, they think that word gets around. Next issue for us. So we started with, and there's a, there's actually a study guide on part of today's staff, so you can follow there in terms of the structure. So the first thing was these two difficulties raised against this Takanav Zman in Get. Now we're moving on, and, and resolutions of it. Now we're moving on to a machloka between Rab and Shmuel. I'm going to see a lot of them today. Me matai monin leget, or itmar. I skipped that word. Itmar is introduction to machloka and moraim. Me matai monin leget. From when do we count the get? For what purposes? Well, you might remember we learned this in other Masechtot, in Yuvamot, in Ketubot, 
that a woman has to wait three months after getting divorced or her husband dying in order to get remarried. What's the reason? The reason is that we're worried the way Chazal believed was that either babies were born after seven months or nine months. And therefore, if the woman is to give birth nine months after the divorce, it's unclear whether it was the nine-month baby to the first husband or a seven-month baby to the new husband. So that's why they say wait three months. And if you wait the three months, then we know already any baby you're going to have is going to be from the new husband and not from the old husband. And any baby before that will be from the first husband. So therefore, from when do we count? Rabamal mishat natina, from the moment the get is received by the woman, which makes a lot of sense. Shmuel amal mishat ktiva. Shmuel says, no, we go by the date on the get, another relevance for date on the get. Matkifla Rav Natan Bar Hoshaya. Rav Natan Bar Hoshaya questions Shmuel's approach. L'shmuel, you're going to end up with some crazy scenario. Yomul shten hashim b'chatser you're going to have a guy who has two wives, and he divorces them both on the same day. But he wrote one of the gets earlier, and one of the gets he didn't write earlier. He wrote on that day. So you're going to have two women in one courtyard that receive their get at the same time. And since one was written three months ago, she can go get married tomorrow. And the other one is forbidden. That would be an absurd scenario. To which Amr Abaye Abaye says, I don't know why you think that's so absurd. It's not so absurd. One has a date of her get written on this day, and the other has a date of her get written on a different day. So what's the difference? You know, no one's going to start saying it doesn't make any sense. Of course, it makes perfect sense. And this structure is going to appear later in the next machloket as well. We're going to now, we have a machloket Rav and Shmuel, and now we're going to have a bright to prove one and a bright to prove the other. So Tanya Kabate Rav, first the bright to prove Rav. A man sends a get with his wife with a shaliach, and the shaliach hangs out for three months before giving her the get. He goes away, I don't know, takes a vacation first. And then, when the get gets to her hands, she needs to wait three months because it goes by when the get was given. That is rough. And we're not worried for a get yashan. What is a get yashan? A get yashan is any get that the husband writes a get, and after he writes the get, he was alone in a room with that woman. We're concerned, maybe, they'll write the, she'll get pregnant, and as a result, right, that's going to basically say, but then you weren't really divorced, and the, the date of the get is before. Because of that, they say a get yashan is disqualified. If a man writes a get, and is alone in a room with his wife after that, it ruins the get. The get is disqualified. So they say here, we're not worried about a get yashan here because the, they were in separate countries or separate areas. The husband sent the messenger right, to give her the get. And there's no concern that they were together at all, even though there were three months that passed from the time he wrote it to the time she received it. Well, normally we'd be worried about a get yashan. We're not worried about it here. Because he wasn't alone with her. Okay, this is basically um, not, right, not the issue. I just want to clarify it a little, say it a little more clear. Rashi says it here. In get yashan, okay, lekaman on daf ayin tet, it's going to say the ena dama garish get yashan. You can't use it. What is a get yashan? If nityachedi ma me achar shkatvula, okay, they were alone in the room after he wrote it. The time and the reason is, and just to say it a little more clear than I did, shema yomru gita kodem levina. We're going to worry that people are going to claim that this son was born out of wedlock, that it was after they were already divorced. Shema titaber v'tele ben ktivatol and nitinato. And after that, they'll say, oh, the get was before, and they're going to claim this wasn't even his child. Okay, that's, that's going to be the concern with the get yashan. So now, the main point, though, wasn't the get yashan issue. The main point was that she has to wait three months from when the get uh, it reaches her. Tanya Kavate de Shmuel. But here's a bright to prove Shmuel that shows it goes by the, ta- the date the get was written. Hamashlish get lishto, somebody who sends it with a messenger. But here a shalish is usually someone who, who watches over something first. So he gives it to the hands of some third party. That's why there are shalish from the word third, like a third party. Don't give it to her until three months pass. Misha natnula, and he specifically, forget about the, the shalich is lazy in this case. It says, right, he did it. It doesn't really make a difference either which way. But he's told by the husband, don't give it to her until three months pass. As soon as he gives it to her, she can get married right away. We're not worried about get because they weren't living together. Okay, he just, for whatever reason, pushed off the giving of the get for three months. 
But since they weren't living together anymore anyway, and he'd already written the get, basically we assume that she can get married as soon as she gets the get three months later, because it's three months have passed since the writing of the get. This obviously follows Shmuel, right? Even though both cases were a little bit different in the Brightest, it doesn't matter the nuances of those differences. One clearly holds like Rav, we go by the time it was given, and the other clearly holds by Shmuel, it goes by the time of the writing. Now we're going to see different rabbis who hold who held different ways. Rav Kana, Rav Pape, Rav Ashi, Avde Mishak Tiva. They held from the time it was written. Rav Pape, Rav Hunabre, Rav Shua, Avde Mishak Netina. They held from the time it was given. So the first group held like Shmuel, the second group held like Rav. The Hilchata Mishak Tiva. And the Gemara actually paskins that we hold like Shmuel goes by when it was written. So she only has to wait three months from the date written on the get, even if she received it later. Itmar, another machloka between Rav and Shmuel. This is a bit of a different topic. We seem to be jumping a little into ketuba issues. Ketuba is an obligation the husband has to pay the wife a certain amount of money in the event of death or divorce. Now, it's like, it's a little bit like a loan. This is money he owes her from the time they get married. So, since it's money he owes her, when Shemitah year comes along, does it get canceled? Right? It would be a little crazy to say it gets canceled. And in fact, it doesn't really. But there are situations when it does. So at what point, me'ematai, k'tuba m'shemetet? Would the Shemitah year generally cancels all loans? We're going to get into a whole discussion of Shemitah in the fourth chapter. But for right now, we'll suffice with Shemitah cancels loans. And the question is, at what point is the k'tuba viewed as a loan? The husband owes the wife money. It's like an IOU. Rav Amal, Mishetifgom v'tizkof. Two things have to happen. Number one, she has to start taking some of the money. And then once she starts collecting the money, the rest of it, okay, is, is like a loan, but only v'tizkof, only if she turns it into a loan, okay? It's something they do in the court where they say, okay, she took, let's say it's 200 zoos, that's the basic amount, forget about the tosefet and all that, but let's just assume the basic amount, 200 zoos. She gets 50 zoos. And then the court says, the other 150 zoos, he still owes you. And then it becomes like a loan. That there's a loan out here that the woman is kind of loaning the man, the 150 zoos, till he returns. Then the Shemitah, if Shemitah comes along, and if the Shemitah, the Shemitah will cancel the loan. Shemuel Amal, Pagma Afapisha Lo Zakfa. Zakfa Afapisha Lo Pagma. Shemuel says just one of those has to happen. If she starts collecting it, then already, it's as if she's collecting the money and... And she's already started. The rest really becomes like a loan, like an IOU. Or she, she didn't collect anything, but she turned it into a loan. She went to the court to say, I want to get my money. He said, I don't have the money. She said, fine, you owe me. And then, even if she hasn't taken any of the money, still, it would be like a loan, and the Shemitah would come and cancel it out. Tanya kavate de Rav, Tanya kavate de Shmuel. So same structure. We're going to have a bride to the support Rav, a bride to the support Shmuel. Here you see it. When does it happen? When? Both those things happen. Both she started get collecting some of the money and the rest of it we turned into a loan. Was turned into a loan. Pagma pagma, but only one and not the other. Either which one, it doesn't matter. It doesn't work. It has to be both. Tanya Kavate de Shmuel. Here's a bright like Shmuel. Ones uknas upitoi uktubat isha. These are all sorts of obligations a man could have toward a woman or toward her family. If he rapes an, an unmarried woman, if he claims that the woman he married wasn't a virgin like she claimed she was, and cheated on him during the um, during the time of the betrothal, and pitoi, which is he seduces a non-married woman. All of these cases, the Torah says there's a payment he needs to pay. And Ketubati Shah, which again is a payment that every husband is obligated to pay, even if he doesn't write a Ketubah for his wife. All those, Shezikafan Bimalve, if they turn them into a loan, then Mishamtin. Okay, so if the court, we're going to see exactly what this means, but if the court determines that it's like a loan, then it's already gets canceled in the Shemitah year, even if she didn't collect part of the money. Ve'im lav, e Mishamtin. And if they didn't do that, then no. So now they say, well, when is it considered that we move this into a loan? Once he gets convicted in court and he owes her the money and he doesn't pay her the money, it automatically is like a loan. Okay, so once the court says you have to pay her this money, then it's like a loan. And at that point, the Shemitah year can come and cancel that out. 
Amar Shmua. So that was a bright to support Shmua. So now Amar Shmua. Ketuba, and now we're going to see how we, why we got the Ketuba, because now the Ketuba is going to connect to our topic. Ketuba kemase beitin dami. It's like a mase beitin, which is mam, which means basically, right, the, you have it even if you didn't write it. The court can insist. Since it's like a mase beitin, we're going to have laws that are similar to a mase beitin, an action done in a court. Ma mase beitin nechtevim vayom v'nechtemim balayla. Just like mase beitin, you can write them during the day and sign them at night. Now you see why we got here, because connecting to the daytime and the nighttime, according to Shmuel, you can write the Ketuba during the day and sign it only at night. So now the Ketuba of Rabbi Chia, the son of Rav, was also, it was written during the day and signed at night. Have Rav Hatam, Rav was there, presumably, right? It was his son. And he didn't say anything. Meaning, seems like he agreed to this, even though that was Shmuel's opinion. So, Lema Shmuel Spirale, do you think he held like Shmuel and agreed that that was okay? No, not true. Asukim Oton Yanha. There's a difference if you're still involved in the same thing. There's a difference. Nechtam Bayom and Nechtam Balayla, there's two scenarios. One is you wrote it during the day, and as you were writing and still dealing with it, it turned to night, and then you want to sign it. This happens, by the way, a lot at weddings. Try to be careful to do all the things of the wedding, either during the day or at night, so that you don't end up with, and where the, the chuppah ends up, you know, in this, well, this is, these are different issues, but they don't like them to be ben ashmashah. There's all sorts of issues involved in, in weddings and that changing of the time between daytime and nighttime. But in any case, right, and also let's say the day of the ketubah, you write as the day and then it turns to night. It's a problem. It's not going to no longer match. But again, here you're going to see that it's actually really okay. Well, this is different because this is the signing of the ketubah, but also the ketubah is kind of saying what day they got married. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the wedding and all that, but basically there's a difference between if we're still dealing with it and then it becomes night, then you can actually sign the document that was written during the day. And that we're going to say even Rav holds that that's okay. And therefore they say, Asukim Oton Yanhav. They were still in the same, they were still dealing with it. As opposed to Shmuel, who thinks if you write it during the day and then you go and take a break and do something else and then come back to it at night, you can still sign it at night. Rav wouldn't agree to that. And how do we know that this Asukim Botoinyan is an issue, that if you're still dealing with the same, you're still dealing with that topic, you can actually still sign the document at night? Because, Ditani, as it says in a bright time, Rabbi Elazar bar Rabbi Tzadok, lo shanu ela kashe'en Asukim Botoinyan. It's only if you're not still dealing with the same topic that nichtab bayom nichtam balayla is a problem. But, right, written during the day, signed at night is an issue. Avalas, kimbo toyan kashil. But if you're dealing with the same issue still, then it's okay. Rabbi Shimo Machshir. Now we're going back to our mission. So just to review, we had number one topic, two difficulties against the two opinions, meaning really against both of them, the whole issue of having Zman and Aget. We resolved them. We moved on to from when do you count the thirty day, the th- three months that the woman is not allowed to remarry after the divorce from the time of the writing of the get or the time of the giving of the get? So I'm a look at Reverend Shmuel. We brought writers to support each case. We also brought a question against Shmuel, but resolved it. Then we brought this other machloka between them. From when is the ketuba get the loan get canceled? When when does it become a loan? We saw two opinions, Rabbi Shmuel, about it, and we brought Brito to support each approach. And then we talked about the side thing about the Ketubah Kamase Beitin, that you could write it during the day and Sunday at night, only according to Shmuel, not according to Rav. According to Rav, it's only if they were still dealing with the same topic. Now we're going to move to the Mishnah of Rabbi Shimon saying that the get written during the day and signed at night is okay, okay, even though it was signed the next day. Amarav, my time of Rabbi Shimon, what's his reason? And now we're going to see, understand why he said that. Because really, the whole issue of Zman is about the payroll, if you hold that. And from the moment he decides he's giving her the get and, and writes the get, already he loses payroll. So if the whole issue, it all goes by when the get was written. So it doesn't matter when it was signed. As soon as he writes the get, already she loses, he loses the rights to her produce, her proceeds. I'm a rich Lakish. Rish Lakish now comes, we're going to have a machlok at Rabbi Yochanan, Rish Lakish, and from here we're going to shift from our machlokot of Rabbi Shmuel that we had in the beginning of the daft, now we're going to see a bunch of machlokot of Rav, Rish Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan. So the first machlokot is the following, is about Rabbi Shimon's approach. Amar Rish Lakish, lo echshir Rabbi Shimon, ela la'avtim. Rabbi Shimon only allowed it 
the way the simple reading of the Mishnah. You wrote it during the day, you signed it that night. So immediately, meaning that night. Avamikan yamim lo. But if you're gonna, ten days are gonna pass from then, no way, no how. Chayshinan shema pies. Because if you signed it during the day, if you wrote it during the day and only signed it ten days later, maybe in the interim, they've been alone together and then we have to worry about a get yashan issue of an old get, right? That's the problem that the husband will have been with the wife in between and that will disqualify the get. Rabbi Yochanan Amal, no, he takes Rabbi Shimon all the way and he says what? Rabbi Shimon said you could write it during the day and sign it at night. You can even, you have up to 10 days to sign the get. Vim ita de pies, if you're worried, oh, maybe they got back together. Kala eat leila milta. We're back to our issue of kala. Everybody will know. Rashi explains one possibility about why everybody will know. Rashi says, interestingly, shash, second line of Rashi here, shashchinim hashchinot, shomim tagav uktata sheben ishlishto. All the neighbors here, they're fighting, right? Uh, the houses were close to each other. They heard the fighting all the time. And kasher yashkit et rivan hakom agishim. If they calm down and stop fighting with each other, everybody would know. So you're only worried about a get yashan when you don't hear screaming anymore. So if it's a case where we didn't hear screaming, then we won't allow it up to 10 days. But if it's a case where we wrote the get and didn't sign up to 10 days, and we still hear screaming coming from their house, we're not worried that they got back together. Okay, could be kali, they mean something else. Just everyone knows when they got back together for other reasons. But according to this, it's actually interesting because Kali usually means there's a cold, there's a noise. This is the lack of noise is going to be proof that they would show us that they actually were together. And, you know, because we know they were back together, then we know about a get yasham. But if we don't know that they're back together, then basically we can assume that he still has up to 10 days to have that get signed. Okay, so we have a big machlok at Rabbi Yochanan Rishakish about how to understand Rabbi Shema. Okay, we're going to come back to this on tomorrow's daf when we connect the next machloka between Rabbi Yochanan and Rishla Kish to this machloka that we just discussed about whether when Rabbi Shimon says it's written during the day, signed at night, you have up to 10 days according to Rabbi Yochanan or Rishla Kish who says no, you have just that night. Itmar, a different, to- totally different machloka and only because of a particular case later we're going to get and connect these two things. Amar Lasa, or try to connect them. Somebody says to 10 people, write a get to my wife. Rabbi Yochanan says, two are signed as witnesses. Eight, no, they all have to sign, but the eight who sign are basically there to fulfill his condition. Why did he make this condition of 10 people? 10 people is usually something you want to make public. He probably wanted to humiliate her in public by making a big deal of the get, and because of that, wanted 10 people. So all 10 of them have to sign. But only two are really considered witnesses. Rish Lakish Amal, again, Machloka Rabbi Yochanan Rish Lakish, Kula Mishum Eidin. All of them function as witnesses. We don't yet know really what's the difference between them. We're going to get to that soon. First, they want to know Hechidami. What exactly is the case? If it sounds like the simple, he just says to 10 people, write me again. That's not the case that they're arguing about. If he didn't say the word Kulchem, all of you, doesn't it say in the Mishnah, if he says to 10 people, write a get to my wife, he doesn't really mean I want all of you signing it. What he means is, if one of you writes, because the writing is only needs to be done by one person, and since you only need two signatures, two of you sign. And he just means out of the 10 of you, three of you should take care of this. But it must be, he said, I want all of you. And when he says all of you, that means all of them need to sign. Even we mentioned this before, and we're going to get to this later. Actually, all of them need to sign in the in front of the other. So it must be he said all of them. And then the question is, again, are all of them signing as witnesses? Or two of them signing as witnesses, because that's the minimum of what you need, and eight of them are just fulfillment of the tonight. So my benayu, what's the difference between these two approaches? What's the practical difference? Ika benayu, because in the end, they all tend to have to sign anyway. Well, Ika ben Ayu, we're going to have two differences. One, Dechatum Beitre Min Ayu Our case, two signed during the day, and we're assuming we're talking about according to the rabbis. Ve'inach Mikam Ba'ada Sarayami. So two signed the day it was written. So according to the rabbis, that's totally fine. And the rest signed Mikam Ba'ada Sarayami. The rest signed up, you know, within the next 10 days. So now, according to the rabbis who say it has to be signed that day, this was signed that day by two witnesses, but not by all ten. 
So if you're Amanda Amar Mishum Tanai, if you're Rabbi Yochanan and you say it's all because of the condition, the eight just need to sign because he wants eight signed, then kasher, because your two witnesses signed in a totally kosher manner. They signed that day. But, right, this isn't according to Rabbi Shimon. This is according to the rabbis who said you need to sign that day. So two signed that day. The others is just because he wants it to be public, so the other eight have to sign later. They still all have to sign in the presence of each other, but they could do it over the course of the next 10 days. Uman de Amal Mishum Edim, but Rish Lakish, who says they're all witnesses, it's going to be pasul, it's going to be disqualified, because witnesses signed up right, the next day, which is already a problem, or all the more so if it's more than the next day. Inami, second nafkamina, practical difference. Kigon mehem karov o pasul. One of them, turns out, was a relative who's disqualified to be a witness or a disqualified witness because they're a liar, they're a, a thief, something like that. Lamanda amal mishum t'nai kasher. Again, if it's one of the witnesses or even a bunch of the witnesses, as long as you have two kosher witnesses, it's fine. Lamanda amal mishum edim. But if you say they're all functioning as witnesses, Jerish Lakish, then it's going to be pasul. It's disqualified. What if, let's say according to Rabbi Yochanan, that you only need two to sign that are good. Does it have to be the first two? What if first ones who signed are a karov or a pasul, as a relative or a disqualified witness? Amre la kasher, amre la pasul. Some people say it's okay, some people say it's not okay. Amre la kasher, tenayu, says, if you say it's kasher, because again, you could say the disqualified one is just part of the tenai, fulfillment of the condition that he wanted all these people signing, but we'll use two of the other witnesses to be considered the witnesses. But some people say it's disqualified because people will say, oh, look, your first two witnesses, one of them is disqualified. Maybe that means that signing on documents in general can be done by disqualified witnesses. And that obviously is not true. We don't want people to misconstrue and think that. So there's a debate about if the first one of the first two signatures is a disqualified witness, does that count or not? Now we're moving on to a situation that happened. Somebody said to 10 people, and it must be Kulchem, all of you write again to my wife. Two signed that day. And the other signed up to 10 days later. So they went in front of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi. And you're going to have to wait tomorrow to see what happens and how they then connect this back to our topic. Okay, so to review what we did today, we started with, again, difficulties with this whole takana, putting the date in the get, two difficulties which we res- resolved. We had the machloket about from when do we start counting the three months for a woman before she can get remarried after the get. Is it from the time of the writing of the get or the time of the giving of the get? We actually pass it in the end is from the time of the writing, the date that's written on the get, even if she gets it three months later. Then we talked about when does a ketubah, Right, and that was a machlok at Rav and Shmuel, and also here, this is a machlok at Rav and Shmuel. When does a ketubah become like a loan that the Shemitah year will come and cancel it out? We saw machlok at Rav and Shmuel there, and then we saw Shmuel talked about this ma'aseh beitin of the ketubah, and that also a ketubah can be written during the day and signed at night, but Rebbe said, uh, sorry, Rav said it can't unless they were still dealing with the same issue. And that kind of led us back to Rabbi Shimon, who said that a get could be written during the day and signed at night. And then the question is why? And that's because she already loses payroll from the time the get is written, not even the time the get is signed. That's how Rish Lakish explains it. And then we had a machlok at Rish Lakish and Rabbi Yochanan about whether the signing has to be done specifically that night, according to Rabbi Shimon, or if Rabbi Shimon even lets it up to 10 days later. Are we concerned for get yashan or are we not concerned for get yashan? Because if there was a get yashan and he was really in a room alone with her, everyone would know that. Then we brought up this other machlok at Rabbi Yochanan Rish Lakish about saying to 10 people, I want you all to write the get. Rabbi Yochanan says it's only really you need two witnesses. The rest need to sign, but only because to fulfill the condition for the husband's set. Rish Lakish says they're all signing as witnesses. We brought two nafkaminas, two relevant practical differences between these two opinions. And then we talked about this one other issue about Rabbi Yochanan. If the first two are signed, and one of them is disqualified. Is that going to ruin it or not? Some people say yes, some people say no. And then we brought this case with Rabbi Yosho ben Levi. And we're going to come back and finish that up tomorrow's daf and then get it ready to the next Mishnah. Wishing everybody a Shabbat Shalom and a Shavuot Tov.